Good afternoon and Merry Christmas. I hope, hope everybody is going to have an absolutely wonderful Christmas, whether you celebrate it tonight, whether you celebrate it tomorrow. Um, but it's good to see you all here. Uh, glad to see families together again. And uh, we're going to worship our Lord here this afternoon. Our opening hymn is number 380, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Christ is born in Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ the everlasting Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we do not always experience the joy of Christmas. We look at the shallowness of the world's celebrations and realize that we too are shallow. We see how materialistic Christmas has become and we feel bitter. Forgive us and renew us that we may experience the joy found in the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God does have mercy upon us. The proof lies in that he sent his only begotten Son into this world as a little baby. Therefore know now that you are forgiven because the blood of the babe of Bethlehem was shed for us. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Your troopers will be willing on your day of battle. Arrayed in holy majesty, from the womb of the dawn, you will receive the dew in your mouth. You are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that the birth of your only begotten Son in human flesh may set us free, who through sin are held in bondage. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please remain standing for our next hymn, Joy to the World, number 387. Scripture readings. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be as deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. But he said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament lesson comes from 1 John, the fourth chapter. 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. For no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. Our gospel lesson is from St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day. and slow 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for this Christmas Eve is our gospel lesson as it was read earlier. Have any of you noticed as you've gotten older how Christmas has kind of changed for you? Um, I, I think it's a little weird how, how things have changed for me Christmas-wise um, the older and the older and the older I get. Uh, for example, or to, to the less you know, maybe you guys are, are, are similar with me. Now that I'm older, my favorite things about Christmas tend to be more like the Christmas music, you know, the songs, the carols, you know, in worship and, and, and on the radio and all of that stuff. Um, and then the other thing that I love about Christmas is my family getting back together again, right? And I get to see my, my kids and, 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 well, my kids are still in the house, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, it won't be long before they're out of the house. Uh, but that's, that's kind of like, it's, it's about, you know, getting together with family and the music and, and all of this and the food and all of that good stuff. That is way different from when I was a kid. I remember when I was a kid, my favorite things about Christmas, one of them was getting to play in the snow, you know. Um, now, I grew up in the 70s. You know, I was born in 72, so, you know, I had the, the, those winters of the late 70s where we had tons of snow, and it was so much fun, and we could dig tunnels and, and build forts and all of that stuff. That was just so much fun at Christmas time. Uh, my other favorite thing, of course, was getting a vacation from school, right? Getting two weeks off of school, that was so much fun, and I loved it, and I couldn't wait for Christmas to get here for that. And then, of course, my other favorite thing as a kid it was opening presents on Christmas morning. Nowadays, and I think part of the reason it's changed for me is because nowadays I don't get a vacation from school <laughs> anymore, right, which is kind of a bummer. We don't even have any snow outside. It's not even close to that, and we haven't had any for a few years now on Christmas Day. Uh, and even if we did have snow, since I'm now 51 years old, I don't think I can play out in the snow as long as I used to. I could go out there all day long when I was a kid. And opening presents, opening presents is kind of fun, you know, but it's not at the top of the list anymore like it was when I was a kid. You know, opening presents was a lot more fun when I was a kid. Christmas, really, though, is all about the greatest gift of all, isn't it? The baby Jesus. The baby Jesus who came down from heaven and was born in a cave or maybe a stable, like what they've got up there. They've got a stable up on that picture. We don't know which one it was. But he was born in a cave or a stable, and he had a manger for a crib. You can kind of see him, you know, laying in the tiny little manger there between Mary and Joseph there. He had a manger for a crib. Um, the baby Jesus who, who ended up living a perfect life for us and died to earn forgiveness for us on the cross and rose again from the dead, to open the gates of heaven. He truly is the greatest gift of all. Well, here's something that I've learned a lot about gifts over the years. The greater the gift, the bigger your involvement with it, 
and the bigger your responsibility in regards to it. If your parents give you socks for Christmas, you probably would have muttered a half-hearted thank you to them and thrown them off to the side to reach for the next present to open, wouldn't you? And you'd kind of even forget before they'd even landed on the ground as you threw them to the side, you'd forget that you had even gotten them. But if your parents gave you a PlayStation 5, you know, and you're kind of into video gaming, but if your place, parents gave you a PlayStation 5, then you'd, you'd shout an excited thank you to them. Mama, Dad, I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you'd immediately want to open it up and plug it into the TV and start playing games on it, wouldn't you? And if your spouse gave you a Lexus like in those commercials, well, well, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? Now those socks... Those socks that I mentioned, they would probably get washed and they'd probably be folded and put into your dresser, waiting for the day when one or the other of them would eventually get lost and you'd completely forget that you ever even owned them, wouldn't they? The PlayStation 5, on the other hand, you would play with that a lot, wouldn't you? And, and hopefully you would carefully put away the game or at least the game controls because you wouldn't want anything to get broken in the game because you'd like to keep on playing it. So you'd take a little bit more and better care of that, wouldn't you? And the Lexus would get regularly cleaned, wouldn't it? It would get regular maintenance, the oil changed, tires rotated, all of that good stuff. You see what I am getting at. The greater the gift, the more that you put into it, right? The more that you use it, and the more responsibility that you have for it. Which brings us back to the greatest gift of all, the baby Jesus. I'm pretty sure almost every person here would admit that Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to us. But do we act like it? Are we really excited about Jesus? Do we, you know, use him as much as we do our PlayStation or even our new Lexus? Do we interact with this gift in a responsible way? And in this case, being, you know, interacting with Jesus in a responsible way means, you know, do we take care of ourselves spiritually in the ways that we know that we should? Or, or do we just every once in a great while, you know, you know, give ourselves the spiritual nourishment that we need? If we are honest with ourselves, we need to admit that we all treat the gift of the baby Jesus, the supposed greatest gift of all, we treat him a lot more like those pair of socks than we do the PlayStation 5. And we definitely don't even come close to treating him like we would the Lexus. We know that he is the greatest gift of all. And yet we still take him for granted, don't we? That's easy to do because God is so filled with grace and with love. We know that God loves us. You know, look at what he did 2,000 years ago. He sent his only begotten son down to earth on our behalf. We know he loves us. We know that he forgives us, right? Someone once told me, he said, the hardest part about church competing with sports in today's world for people's time, about church competing with sports is that people know that the church will forgive you if you don't make it to church. Whereas your coach, or the coach for your kids, will not let your kid play if they miss practice. The church forgives. It takes its cue from God. And because of all of this, it becomes very easy to take God for granted. To kind of put Jesus in the back seat. And maybe if you have the time, you know, come check in with Jesus a little bit. You know, spare a little bit of time with him. Get our spiritual tune-up, which we know God will always give us because he loves us and forgives us. No matter how long it's been since we've last seen him. I think it's about time we start treating Jesus like he really is the greatest gift of all with joy and excitement that he is actually our Savior. You know, it would be great if we would intentionally take the time 
every day to just spend a little bit of time with Jesus in prayer or devotions or whatever. It would be wonderful if we took responsibility for this wonderful gift that he has given it and use it in the way that Jesus most wants us to use him, right? To give ourselves that, that, that regular spiritual checkup, that regular spiritual tune-up that we all need so that we can live forever in his grace and forgiveness and love and be constantly uplifted by him and so that our joy can be made complete. Around Christmas time, it's easy to say, oh yeah, we're going to take advantage of this gift, the greatest gift of all. We're going to take advantage of it a lot more, you know? At Christmas time, it's easy to say that, you know? But like most Christmas presents, after a little bit of time, the novelty wears off, and we kind of forget about them and kind of take them for granted and leave them off to the side. This year, try not to do that with Jesus. He is the greatest gift of all, not just for today, but for the entire year. And it's about time we take advantage of that. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Please rise as we bring our offering forward and sing our offertory hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 361.
Please join me in prayer. Father, as we celebrated the birth of your Son, help us always to remember that he was born for a specific reason, that he might bring eternal life to all who believe. Watch over all those who travel this holiday season. Bring them safely to their destinations and safely home again. If it is your will, comfort to those who are depressed and heal those who are sick, especially those who are on our hearts and minds now. That we may all rejoice in the life you give us through your Son. Let us take great joy this Christmas in our families and friends, in time off from work and studies, and most importantly, in your Son, Jesus Christ, who was born to bring us peace. Grant us compassionate hearts that desire all people to know the true joy of Christmas. Motivate us to share that joy with those who do not yet have it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless your coming in and your going out from this time forward and even forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we're going to be turning off our lights and lighting our candles. The way it'll work is I will light the first person's candle in each row, and then if you could light, light on down the line that way. And uh, after all of the candles are lit, we will conclude our worship service by singing Silent Night. We now continue with Silent Night. <laughs> 